Thank you. Thank you, Rafa. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Jamie, for organizing these workshops. And so it's, it's an honor to kick it off. And so the title of my talk is Neural Network Learning Quantum Chemistry. Again, I thought it's going to be very technical. Uh, so this will be a little of introduction. Before I run out of time, the mandatory acknowledgments for the member of my lab, collaborators for Thalamus, University of Florida, funding from Office of Malware Research National Science Foundation, and a lot of agencies that provide high performance computing. Now, uh, when we think about you know, the dilemma in, in computational chemistry, so you have a few choices, right? So if you're interested to uh, simulate a large system, you're typically stuck in the realm of the molecular mechanics force fields, they're nice. They fast is a little, you know, uh, analytical formula, or you know, if you want to really to do uh, rigorous uh, quantum mechanics, you can you have to solve a Schrodinger equation. Okay, sorry. Okay, and you can put this thing into a little cartoon when we have on x, x scale, scale of the of the methods and some kind of metric of accuracy. So again, for kind of large system, you know, proteins and maybe realistic materials, you stuck here. Uh, it's typically linear scaling methods. And the problem is this force fields, not that they cannot be accurate. The problem is that it's very hard to make them transferable. You train on one system and apply it to another system and then it doesn't work. So your uncertainty typically very high. And if you want to uh, systematically uh, decrease this uncertainty, you have to climb this ladder and it include more and more rigorous quantum mechanical uh, descriptions, you know, maybe semi empirical time binding method, density functional theory, couple cluster theory, but you pay the price with the scaling. And, you know, for organic molecules, you know, the conventional couple cluster theories. Uh, the turbative triplets give you one kkl chemical accuracy, but you pay the price of seven uh, order of scaling. And for really picky people, there's a you know kind of having a full CI complete basis set that is of course um, not practical for anything. Um, so the spoiler alert and why all of us are here is the promise of machine learning atomistic potentials that you you move the your, your methods into this uh, left corner where you try to approach accuracy of your reference quantum mechanical methods, but still maintaining a nice uh, favorable scale. So in a sense, you know, what we try to solve is that we have the zoo of uh, force fields, but now unfortunately we have even, even messy because we have a zoo of various ML and, and, and hybrid methods. So for the past few years, we've been developing, you know, as, you know, families of different methods, starting from ANI, which has, you know, short range um, description using a neural network, and you can add dispersion, typically prima type D2, D3 dispersion. Um, in addition, just prediction energy, we can uh, predict other quantity things like charges, C6 various coefficients, you can be a little bit more elaborate and uh, combine neural network with, again, this dispersion and maybe some kind of, you know, long range, typically electrostatics uh, based on charges. <clears throat> or we have another architecture called AMNet where everything implicit inside the neural network. So neural network, you know, also describe the long range interactions. And therefore there's a range of various neural network architectures that we developed. Uh, how to, it's a busy slide, uh, but how to read it, these yellow things would be your molecular coordinate inputs and outputs of energy and, and charges. The blue blocks would be mathematical transformation, for example, you know, going from Cartesian coordinates to atomic environments and embeddings. And the green blocks uh, would be blocks of the neural networks. And, you know, starting from, uh, you know, on your left, would be the simplest fully connected neural network, ANI. Uh, and, you know, again, going more, more complex, 
to, to the right. So for example, this is kind of a hybrid machine learning physics-based methods where your neural network fits into model Hamiltonian and for example, uh, modulating certain overlap integrals and can predict energy and orbitals, things like that. So if you're interested in technical details, uh, we put this uh, review on accounts of chemical research. It's available here. But uh, what it gives you, I think it's almost solved the problem of uh, gas phase isolated organic molecules for typical you know, drug-like organic molecules with biogenic elements. It gives you extremely high accuracy potential energy surface. Uh, again, many of our methods are transferable. You train them once and then plug in them in and, uh, and apply for your types of simulation, give you extremely accurate uh, geometry potential energy surface. So for example, those are plots of, of, of the potential energy surface for this uh, couple of different dihedrals. And here, DFT on the right, uh, machine learning on the left, and you can hardly see the difference. Gives you very accurate gas phase thermochemistry. Here we apply tricks what's called the transfer learning when you train a neural network first on a density functional theory calculations, and then use transfer learning, for example, combine this couple cluster. And very recently, we venture into this kind of a danger zone where we can actually revisit at reference thermochemical data, again, for small organic molecules. Uh, I think the accuracy of our thermochemistry is so good, we can pinpoint where the gas phase uh, formation enthalpy experiment probably off. Um, <clears throat> a couple of points, we already have a, a revised information again interested is a paper here now what i i'd like to talk uh for the rest of my um time is the what i think uh, uh very promising direction uh, so it's a, a you know um architecture which we called aimnet so if you look for typical uh beller paparinella type of of the neural network where you feed molecular coordinates into atomic embeddings feed it in neural networks, get the energy. Uh, it truncates your interaction uh, within the cutoff. So what you can do is two things, right? You, are, you can add extra blocks, things like message passing, and describe this uh, uh, lunar inter interactions. But also you can move away from you know, your prescribed uh, atomic environments into learnable embeddings. And how does it work? It works actually quite well. Uh, so essentially, you can take those embeddings, uh, you know, train your neural network, and then you know, project them into 2D space. So for example, this is Tisney projection of these atomic uh, feature vectors. You see these blobs uh, of different element types, which kind of looks like the corner of the periodic table. You have carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, you know, halogens. You can zoom in. in for example, in the carbon blob, and you can see this clustering of different carbons in, 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 in different en environment, you know, different substituents, and also this, this pattern nicely correlates with partial atomic charge. So if you want to do chemical reactions, if you want a little block that depends on total molecular charge and spill multiplicity and adds uh, this extra block, which we called a uh, neural spin equilibration, which also assigns spin polarized charges mixing them with the updates. And therefore, these three things is essentially what you need to solve uh, Schrodinger equations, molecular coordinates, spin and multiplicity, gives you an energy. And that approach gives you physically correct behavior because you can modulate your spin charges and get a discrete energy behavior as it's expected in physics. Now, let me briefly show you how this uh, neural spin equilibration blocks work. Essentially, 
again, it, it, it allows you to describe various non-local uh, effects. So for example, it's a prototypical conjugated system with electron withdrawing and donating groups. Imagine if you either attach or detach an, an electron to it. This is what DFTV tells you. You see this the localization is a spin or a hole. So this is your spin charges. If you just use typical uh, you know, ge geometrical uh, descriptor-based methods, they spread out and essentially even out all the charges. And, and this is qualitatively incorrect behavior. And again, using the neural spin equilibration essentially allow you to describe this kind of a spin wave behavior where you have positive negative phases in the, in, in the spin charges. Now, this architecture also can give you access to a variety of uh, reactivity indices. If you still remember what is conceptual DFT theory, this is the theory that can give you, you know, provide your uh, calculation for things like chemical potential, various felicity indices, Fukui indices, molecular hardness, and all of them are partial derivatives of energy with respect to a total number of electrons or infinite uh, difference approximation, various quantities. So now given this architecture, we can train it once and then get all of that essentially for free by fully bypassing quantum mechanical calculation because you can plug in different charge spin states, get your charges in different uh, spin states, plug it in and get all the indices. Again, I will not bore you with the you know, accuracy plots, but it works very well. We tested in a couple of examples. So for example, prediction of rigid selectivity in uh, aromatic, uh, electrophilic uh, aromatic substitution reaction. So this is your typical you know, organic chemistry textbook example of bromination and basically rigid selectivity tells you uh, in which direction, uh, direction of, would occur in the uh, in this aromatic rings. So state-of-the-art methods would either use quantum mechanical, you know, conceptual DFT features or combine these features with the semi-empirical methods, which called RHG SQMs that enumerates all the sigma complexes uh, to get about 90% accuracy to predict uh, direction of these reactions. So plug it in directly uh, without retraining, essentially AMNET gives you the same the same accuracy, but a million times faster. Now we work on developing a fully uh, reactive uh, force field. So this is a, again, development version of AIMNET. Uh, you can do all your favorite things, localized transition states, run IRC, and just give you a flavor. This is a DFT versus uh, prediction for reaction energy barrier heights. And so this is AMNET. Again, you know, the product reactants extremely well, one kill per mole, slightly larger error for uh, barrier heights. But for example, this is the, you know, uh, tight, tight binding method, XTB. And, you know, we substantially improve accuracy for both uh, energies and barrier heights. And also, you know, problem in, XT, in XTB is that you, you know, you, you get an, you know, wrong, you know, energies of, of uh, <clears throat> products and therefore, you know, it can be massive error in terms of the um, prediction of energy. And basically it allows you to do reactive uh, MD simulation. This is a fun example I, I run on my laptop, running 100 methane molecules with oxygen, probably hard to see, but basically it burns. You, you see formation water and, and very small molecules and basically you know you can get kinetics and, and things like that and again you can run this simulation on a laptop it's an you know uh, typically like a force field like um, time uh, with that all of our codes are on github you know you have plugins for your favorite uh, simulation packages openmm amber namdi lumps teamcare uh, ADF, you know, same as AIMNET. If you're interested to get in our 
uh, reference data. Again, it's on GitHub, both DFT and, and coupled cluster data. And finally, we just released um, kind of a quality of life tools uh, called After 3D. Uh, essentially, what it can help you is to find low uh, low lying um, uh, conformers for organic molecules. So, for example, you can start from smiles or through to the sketches. Uh, so you can find your various uh, totemers, you know, uh, and antiomers if you don't have uh, assigned uh, stereochemistry, you know, runs parallel optimizer of, of conformers and find, uh, you know, uh, the dimensional structure for your downstream application tasks. Again, the preprint on a CAD archive. And with that, thank you very much for your attention. Thanks very much, Alex, uh, for the great talk. Uh, we have time for a few questions, if folks have any. So uh, can you say something when you train your network? How long does that take approximately? Uh, well, it, that would depend on the size of your training data set. If you get like 10 million data points, probably a day, maybe a weekend. On a single GPU. And have you observed the problem of uh, having holes basically? Mention surface, right? High dimensional connections. Sure, yes. So, again, if you if we look into find transferable potential, so we, we find these holes all, all this. Chemistry is almost endless. Uh, again, I totally skip it here, but we use, you know, ensemble disagreement, active learning when. You know, you find if there is a, you know, certain either chemical moieties or molecules have extremely high disagreement. This typically means. Uh, we do eight because it's a, you occupy a dense GPU node, not to waste a time, but it's, it's a low number. It can be four, can be few, can be five, but five is not particularly, you know, convenient for a node size. Uh, so we use eight or can be four. So how does this depend on the uh, diversity of your training set? In the sense, does, does Annie sort of generalize well to chemical scaffolds that aren't seen in the training set? Or do you need to make sure you're training on exactly the type of small molecule sort of moieties that you are going to it's hard to answer. It is generalized quite well. It always gives you energy forces. <laughs> but of course, if you never see four sulfur atoms in the row, it's not magic, it will not predict accurately. But if you think about it, if you've seen enough different heterocycles, it typically work well for you know extrapolate and, and that space of nitrogen in different space, or you have uh, things like that. Uh, but what we see with the interaction with the, you know, various pharmaceutical companies that use it for very exotic space, proprietary molecular space, as they do have, uh, sometimes it, it, it degrades the accuracy because, you know, there's nothing that in the public chemistry space you can train to. So if you're interested in just organic molecules, typically like a neutral, so simplest architecture like any fully connected, you know, neural network, it works already well. This more fancy architecture gets your in more corner cases when you have Twitter ions, you have long, you know, longer range interactions. The charge is actually quite robust. Uh, we can initialize, you know, if you pre-train neural network, right? And then 
put the, you know, for example, let me go over. If you, if you train that and you plug in dummy charges in a couple of iterations, it's actually converged quite nicely and you get 10 to the minus three. And it's, you know, it's, it's quite good. Thank you.